Turning overseas, it was another shocking day of violence in Nigeria. An explosion tore through a shopping district in the capital, Abuja, during rush hour. This is the third attack in Abuja in three months. It comes as fear and anger grows over the government's apparent inability to protect its citizens. Earlier, I spoke with the Rise News correspondent Deji Badness, Badness rather, who reports from Lagos, Nigeria. Deji, there's yet another explosion in Abuja. What is the latest that you've learned about this one? Well, Debbie, uh, this was, uh, the police have confirmed that uh, this was uh, a, a, a car bomb and um, possibly a suicide bomber uh, detonating a bomb at a very busy shopping complex, shopping plaza. And um, this shopping plaza is not far away from the seat of power. It's in a very busy area, of course, an upscale area in the city of Abuja. And quite a number of people died in the attack. Uh, so uh, we, we understand an arrest has been made. The police is confirming that uh, an individual has been arrested. And as a matter of fact, uh, the, the one, some of the local um, newspapers here are confirming that uh, the director general of the National Orientation Agency has confirmed that uh, an individual has been arrested and that uh, it, it was a car bombing, Debbie. And do you know anything about this individual? Does this individual have connections with, of course, who everyone thinks of when we think of violence uh, in the country, and that's Boko Haram? Well, it's, it's still too early to tell. The, the, the police is not saying that. The security agents are not, uh, agencies now are not disclosing the identity of this individual and whether this individual is in any way connected to Boko Haram. Of course, Boko Haram is heavily suspected in this uh, incident. Uh, because not quite long ago, Boko Haram threatened it was going to carry out a series of bombings in the federal capital territory, and then this is happening. So it's just natural that suspicion would fall on Boko Haram. Do not also forget that uh, the sect carry out uh, two bombing incidents in this same city uh, about a month or two ago, where in the first one, of course, 75 persons died, and in the second one, about uh, six or so, or nine died. So we still do not know if Boko Haram is responsible for this attack. Of course, it has not claimed responsibility, and the identity of this individual that has been arrested has not been disclosed. Uh, we do not know if the, it has any connection at all to Boko Haram, Debbie. Can you tell us just a little bit more about this area where the shopping center is? And you said it's an upscale neighborhood. Just give us a little more detail. Well, the place is known as Wusei. Wusei is an upscale neighborhood and not so far away from uh, the seat of power. That is the presidential villa in Abuja. It's a very busy area. The attack happened at about 4 p.m. local time. Now, at that time, you would expect uh, the, the, the shopping plaza to, to, uh, to, to be very busy. But we also understand that uh, most of those who died in this attack uh, were actually fruit sellers who were selling at the entrance of the shopping plaza because we understand the bomber was not able to gain, uh, to gain entrance now that this incident happened just at the entrance of the plaza. We understand the casualty figure might have been higher than what we're getting now if uh, the bomber had succeeded in driving right into the plaza before detonating the bomb. Yeah, I Debbie. suppose we could be grateful about that. And at this hour, what is the report on the number of fatalities and injuries? Well, the police has confirmed that 21 persons died in the attack and that 17 were seriously injured. But they are also warning that the number may go up, Debbie. Thank you so much for this update. Deji Badmas, we do appreciate it. Catch Onanuju is a security and political analyst, and he joins us here in our New York studio to give us some uh, much-needed perspective and background of what we're seeing of this Boko Haram insurgency in Nigeria. Welcome to Arise America, Catch. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you for having me. I think, first of all, I want to ask you, do you believe this latest bombing uh, at the shopping center is Boko Haram? And then what do you make of the location? This is Abuja, where we've not normally seen uh, this type of uh, violence, and it's an, uh, an exclusive neighborhood. So that's a lot to ask you, but go ahead. This is the very first time bombing has occurred in Abuja, Maine. You know, there are the previous ones were on the outskirts of Abuja. This is the first time in Abuja. Mm -hmm. Now, do I expect the bombing to continue? Yes. Why? Because the bombing is in reaction to sudden political introductions of democracy and the loss of advantages and previously hard privileges by a select group who mm -hmm. had the privileges under dictatorship 
under the military, under the British colonial system, but with the coming of democracy, just like in Iraq, a ruling minority loses their grip on power, and in reaction to the laws, mm -hmm. they try to undermine the country with force and violence. But look at the country generally, holistically, it's doing well. It's the best in Africa. It's had the best economy in Africa, 15 years of unbroken economic expansion, to the extent it has been celebrated with the hosting of the World Economic Forum. And you can tell me that's not a good government. It's doing well. But this is a price Nigeria pays for the introduction of democracy. Don't forget, Nigeria was colonized twice. First, by the Fulanese that colonized the House of States, then by the British that mm -hmm. colonized Lagos and the Southern Protectorate. Mm -hmm. But while Nigerians fought against white domination, that got the British to leave. But unlike Mandela, they didn't fight against black domination. And as a result of that, no house of man is emir, no house of man is governor in house of land. So these are the kind of things you're saying. So uh, you have that ruling minority, just like in Iraq. You remove a ruling minority, they come back with violence. And I, what do they do? They clothe it. I understand, Katz, all masquerade. very good points to make. Of course, Nigeria does have the largest GDP on the continent of Africa, a very oil-rich country, an advanced country. No one disputes any of that. I guess for many of us who are watching from the outside, then it's hard to understand the dichotomy. A country that is so advanced, doing so well, has so many resources at its disposal, why it seems to be so difficult to stem this increasing tide of violence from Boko Haram. Don't forget, when you mention the country developed, you're wrong. It is one of the darkest parts of the earth. Nigeria holds humanity's largest amount of children out of school than anywhere else on earth. Why? Followed in that shameful record by Pakistan. For one reason, Nigeria's note has what you call the Almanjiri system, a system of in Islamic religious indoctrinization, the same thing you have in Pakistan called the madrasas. Now, you have a lot of those people, uh, they don't have access to education, they're not educated, so they do not have any role or advantages to be in in a democracy that is instrumented upon merit and the market system. And this is what you see. They do not know, most of these people, how to negotiate, succeed and win in a democracy. And for the introduction of democracy, they have nothing to do, caught up with time, they react violently. Mm -hmm. But Nigeria is a beautiful place, and that's what we believe the United States must stay engaged with Nigeria to help Nigeria go through the transition of going away from dictatorship into democracy. You can always see the middle way through the democracy is successful. Nigeria so today, the rebasing of its economy, I see as an honest audit of the import an impact of democracy. And you could see they now have the biggest economy in Africa with a very strong deficit in infrastructure. And that means American businesses can come in. And you can see GE already okay. broke ground on a $1 billion facility to provide turbines, to provide the energy that Nigeria needs to grow its economy to be able to provide for a semi population. All right, Catch, I'm all out of time and I really have to stop. So I'm going to ask you if you'll keep this answer brief. But is that the answer then in your mind? Because everyone, the international community, is you know looking for answers to stem this tide of violence. Of course, everyone is heartbroken about these 200 uh, schoolgirls that are still missing and have not been rescued. So what is the answer? What is the answer to break what seems like, from the outside, an ever-increasing cycle of violence at the hands of Boko Haram? It is inevitable. The answer to this is the international community must go in, engage with the present crop of leaders of Nigeria, those leaders that have produced the sterling economic records, and do encourage them to provide, and this is very important, mandatory Marshall Plan for Education in Northern Nigeria, so that you could be able to build a middle class. And with that middle class, I also will tell you, you will see more trouble. Why? The middle class will not challenge those who have put them under bondage. And once you have a middle class, they start asking questions. Right now, the bombings are not being instrumented by the middle class. No, it's been instrumented by the previous owners of, as they call, their private estate. Of course, 
The country belongs to everybody. Today, Nigeria mm -hmm. should be commended for being able to build an inclusive democracy. Today, its president is a minority, a skill that's unknown before. Okay. Its head of uh, uh, parliament is a minority. Today, the head of the biggest government-owned business, NMPC, is also a minority. So the inclusion of minorities also underscores the truth about Nigeria's attempt to build an inclusive country. Of course, every time you bring in somebody, you displace an old master. And in reaction, they bomb. Okay. But the bomb would not intimidate Nigeria. Nigeria is like a virgin awaiting discovery. And as far as I'm concerned, the gentlemen mm -hmm. are all lining up our side. Like a virgin waiting, awaiting discovery. You're very poetic. Catch on Anuju. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to speak with you. I thank you for having me.